So for something as you as auditors, right, is there is there some crazy cool, I don't know if it's all right, if there are any stories to tell or any nightmare situations of some wild and crazy vulnerability that you found or some recent incident that really fires you up? Like, I, I don't know, like, if I can discuss, like, specific yeah. vulnerabilities, sure, sure, but, I like, I can tell you what the holy grail of uh, this smart contract hacking mm -hmm. is, and it's always draining the protocol, the project out of funds, out of funds. So I guess as, uh, so as we all as we're all sitting here i guess each of us found at least one of these uh, in the uh, protocols that we were auditing so basically with a you know just one little transaction that can fit into a one udp packet we could you know just steal uh, hundreds and tens of millions of dollars in, wow. in in value of you know regular people like we are that are just you know trying to participate in this big exciting adventure that's called web3 and you know uh, they, they they they're making the mistake to trust a project that is not uh, you know was not audited or you know was uh, was perhaps audited incorrectly and um, you can like list and list all kinds of you know really cool vulnerabilities um, you know denial of service it it also applies to to, to blockchain as well and I, I think we've all seen it in uh, multiple uh, smart contracts um, access control issues but yeah you always you always on the lookout for that you know um, withdraw function uh, that might not even be called withdraw function it sometimes it's even called deposit but it's like you're depositing from the vault to your account <laughs> so it's kind of works in reverse uh, so uh, uh, you even have to be careful about what the code says and what the comments say in the code because the comments sometimes lie sometimes they're just incorrect uh, sometimes you you misunderstand them so like uh, in Solana for example like the best source of information is Solana source code. It's like trying to read, you know, the source code of uh, Windows to, to learn how to, you know, create a file or create a folder, which, uh, you know, it's taking the high road, but it's also like the ultimate source of truth. And if you read that and you interpret that correctly, you, you're guaranteed that what you're doing is, is going to work because documentation like blockchain is still evolving and like the new features come out every day and uh, the documentation if you rely, rely solely on documentation you might end up you know getting your information that getting information that's outdated and that's you know another kind of you know uh, risk and danger that you have to be uh, you know careful with uh, i have to mention that <clears throat> for example many many protocols has a, a like a costume to fork from other projects so what is very interesting that if one project has a vulnerability that is even not uh, discovered, they bring the same vulnerability yeah. uh, again and again uh, until someone of them uh, patch up the vulnerability and start sharing information. They they, they are protocols that are still uh, in danger. Uh, what what Peter mentioned about access control is it's, it's key because uh, you know many developers believe that. Uh, because users are, go are going to use like a web or, or a mobile application to interact with a blockchain, uh, that the only key aspects to, to secure are the ones that are going to be in interaction directly with the web. But on the other hand, we know that we have different clients and we can um, call directly a function that is not protected. And here comes the access control problems. So we can also drain a whole smart contract and we are talking about millions of dollars. Well, cool, guys. This has been awesome. Uh, I, for one, think I see a lot more of the value in like, hey, you know, some security issues can be serious, like crazy control of legitimate money, uh, huge amounts, right? Uh, and seeing that in a tangible way across all the different projects or platforms or protocols, that it's wild to me. And for one thing, I'm excited to, hey, go jump into some Rust or go jump into some Solidity or get a, get my hands on and work in some of these things. So thanks, everyone. This has been very, very cool. Uh, and thank you for shining light on a little bit of what you're doing day to day. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to more conversations just like this. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank thank you. Thanks, John.